psychiatrists. Psychiatrists were given the green light for the wholesale labeling and drugging of school children. Everyone says Andrew and I really are on a mission. We are very, very passionate about this information we have to share. And I know some of you have been along before. Can I just ask who has been to the seminar before? And they came back. And they came back. I spoke to one lady before. I think this is her sixth seminar somewhere in the front here. So that's fantastic. So well done. Um, as everyone said once again, we are the parents of two wonderful boys. We have Caleb, who's 14, and our eldest son, Nathan, who's 21. I guess Nathan's life has been positively, I guess, hopefully positively um, affected and impacted by this information as well because he's actually now chosen a career of naturopathy where he's going to be able to help families in, in uh, challenging situations like Andrew and I. But um, we are very, very passionate about getting this information out to you. Now, Caleb, our 14-year-old son, let's just say was a bit of a challenge as, as a baby and a toddler. And I guess by the time he was um, starting to move around and, and, and get around in the world, it was quite evident that uh, there was a huge challenge. As a small baby, if he wasn't feeding or sleeping, he was virtually screaming. And I don't know if anybody else can relate to that, but it was quite a challenge, a few hands up there. And by the time he was a toddler, I thought to myself, boy, we've certainly got a busy little fella on our hands here. We, we lived in a, um, a country town called Shepparton at the time and there was only a handful of, of daycare centres in, in Shepparton at that time. And because of Ch Caleb's challenges that he was having, we had to keep um, changing the daycare centres and he just about visited each and every one of them because they really experienced a lot of difficulties with Caleb. He didn't socialise very well. He would hit and pinch and punch and bite and he was a true challenge. And as parents, of course, Andrew and I were very, very concerned about what was happening with our little boy and why he was experiencing these sorts of challenges. So as you do, you, you, know, you ask for advice and you try and figure out what, what's happening. At one of the daycare centres, they were struggling with colour. They really were. They were trying their best, but they were really struggling. And they brought in um, some help. I think the lady was a clinical psychologist. And she came in and used Caleb for a period of time and then she called Andrew and I into the room and said, OK, I'll figure it out. And we thought, beauty, <laughs> is it going to be this easy? She said, I think your son Caleb has childhood depression. And I thought, hmm, childhood depression? If she had said mother depression, I would have said, yes, bring it on. <laughs> but when she said childhood depression and then recommended that we medicate our child, our three-and-a-half-year-old child with antidepressants, I thought, this just does not sound right. This, this can't be the, the path or the journey for our family. So at that stage, we started seeking more advice. And unfortunately, every bit of advice we got from there on in, they were not the answers that we were seeking. We went to the paediatrician, the local paediatrician in town, who was so overwhelmed with Taylor's challenges, he handballed us straight to the mental health wing of the local hospital who diagnosed Caleb with a condition, um, well, this is what they call it, ODD, which is Oppositional Defiance Disorder, which often comes hand in hand with ADHD, which I think most of us have heard of, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And we go, okay, so you've given it a name, what do we do now? Who'd like to guess what they suggested? Medication, you're all spot on. And a little while earlier, we had recommended antidepressants and now here they were recommending our four, I think he was getting closer to five, but four, four, four year old child, um, amphetamines. And Andrew and I were just amazed. We thought, what is going on here? This is not what we want for our child. We don't want to medicate our, our, our child with, with drugs that, um, at that time. We didn't know that much about, but we, we'd heard enough of that to know that wasn't the way we wanted to go. So our journey has been a long and interesting one, and I guess. We, we were sat on a razor's edge at that stage. We were parents that were truly desperate. We had a child that was totally out of control, but we didn't know what to do. We didn't know what the answers were at that stage. 
we knew that we didn't want to take the advice of the, of the psychologist and the paediatrician and the specialist at the hospital. We didn't want to medicate Caleb, but we didn't know what else we wanted to do or what else we could do. So I guess the, the presentation this evening really does cover the four areas that, that we went on to explore and get fantastic results with. So it's been a long journey for Andrew and I, and the big thing is that the information that we share with you tonight, you can take home and start implementing um, as, as soon as you like, because I guess we're not practitioners, as, as was said earlier, but we've found this, this really does work, and I know there are a lot of people in the room that have got great results implementing this sort of, um, this sort of formula. So basically there are four um, facets or, um, to, the, to the approach we take. Firstly, meeting the body's nutritional needs that diet simply doesn't supply today. Andrew's going to cover that in more detail shortly. Secondly, eliminating toxic chemicals in personal care and household usage. If you haven't done any research on this one yet, you're going to be in for quite a surprise. It's, it's going to really be quite a shock to you because it, it, it's a huge area. Thirdly, reduction of exposure to chemicals in all areas of food production. Uh, we've left food to the, uh, to the end because to be quite honest, it's probably the hardest area to control. Um, but we'll talk about that later. Now once we've worked on the three, I guess the physical aspects of this formula, we still thought there was something still not quite right. There was still something missing. He was doing a whole heap better. His hyperactivity lessened, his aggression lessened, his concentration improved. He basically was becoming more of a, a likeable child, um, so to speak. But there was something still missing because every now and then he would still act out a, um, a, a some sort of aggression or you know, hit or punch somebody or do something like um, punch up the bus driver or break his teacher's nose, which in fact he did. Andrew's going to share with you something shortly um, to do with working with the self-esteem and self-image that is going to, um, to show you how and why that area is so important, working on self-esteem and self-worth. 